I plead the blood of Holy Yahushua over this video and over the mind, body, and spirit of every child of Yah watching this video in Yahushua HaMashiach's holy name. Right. So, saints, remember I was talking about uh, last week the TV show New Amsterdam? Well, the day that that video was published, I found myself in an ambulance going to the emergency room. <laughs> I kid you not. <laughs> Shalom, saints. So yes, I have a crazy, crazy story to tell you. Let's finish interpreting the movie, The Arrival. Hi, saints. It's me, Messenger Paula. And again, I'm breaking into this video. Please uh, excuse the lighting and the sound. It's because we, we have um, a heat wave, a short heat wave here in Paris, France. It's like um, 35 it's going to be 40 degrees Celsius which is really hot I think it's like 90 to 100 degrees and I so I have on the air conditioner and a fan and so the sound I think it's better for me to use the the um, the microphone so you can hear me better and also the light is because I have all the windows shut because it's you know to keep the apartment cool as I said in the opening I, the, the day that this video aired last Friday, that night, I had uh, a private medical concern. Nothing that you need to worry about. I'm fine. It was just a thing that happened. And I ended up having to go to the hospital in an ambulance as a precaution. But as I said, don't worry, everything is fine. I am very blessed, I am very healthy. Um, Holy Yahushua has healed me of every ailment, even my allergies. So I'm, I'm really good. It was just a freak thing that happened. I understand that this experience happened so that I would pay attention to the ambulance in the TV show, New Amsterdam Saints. Why? I, I, I have so much to tell you. I just, I can't speak fast enough. I just wish I had telepathy. I could just be like Zzzz. When I was going through the, the experience of being in the ambulance and going to the emergency room, the things I was thinking, I was thinking, well, this has never happened before. I've never been in an ambulance before. I haven't been in an emergency room since 1996. And in 1996, I went for a sinus infection. Like it, I've never been ill, right? Uh, in a major way. So I, I was in disbelief. That was the first thing. The second thing was after my appointment, I saw the doctor, everything is okay. I noticed the ambulance and the ambulance that was driving towards me, the number was 153. Now it was backwards. It was 531, but we know that we, as we're learning about these letters, they're written like in Hebrew, uh, backwards, as far as we're concerned, it's, it's going from right to left. So that would be 153. So I was like, wow, that's weird, 153 on the ambulance just as I'm leaving the hospital. And then when we get into the taxi, it's 14, uh, 144, excuse me. I saw 144 like two or three times. So I knew that this was a major message. And I'm like, what are you trying to tell me, Holy Father? What is it? What is it? So I come home and I finish watching New Amsterdam Y'all, <laughs> you won't believe this. I couldn't make it up if I wanted to. Uh, spoiler, spoiler alert for people who haven't seen the end of the TV show. Uh, you might want to plug your ears for just one minute, but they get in a car accident. Okay, you can unplug your ears now. It's all right. The car that they're in, they're actually in an ambulance, right? And so this is the ambulance that they were in. 
and you can see clearly on here that it's 717. Now, I noticed this specifically because I had just been in an ambulance and I had just seen 153 on the ambulance. So we have New York and 717. We also have right here, it says, Oh God, okay, which is... <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I don't think I need to explain that, right? And then, so I went ahead and did the 717 letter line. By the way, this is our website, Wakefulness Theology. Um, anytime you want information on letter lines, it's a work in progress, but you just go here, click the living uh, letter lines of the living book. You have videos right here. We have groups, we have forums, we have everything you need. It's a, the website is a, in, a work in progress, but for the moment, you have lots of information here if you need it. So uh, to see the letter line better, you can just click on the letter line. Did you see that? Not all of them, but the, the newer ones that I'm doing, you just click here and it pops up. Armageddon, destruction, a symbolic name to gather, pluck, architecture, design, regularity of reoccurrence with, one, with one's own hand, doing personally, overestimation in a bad sense a rebellion sedition a revolt so destruction or symbolic armageddon causes people to be gathered together into the ark architecture design means focusing on components or elements of a structure in this case being the ark noah's ark the crucifixion and the ark of the covenant are all symbolically represented by 717 1717 and 44 for more information about that I've done videos about it and also you can just scroll down to the bottom of the screen and you have a video right here that explains all of that. All three represent redemption and honoring the covenant. So architecture design is everything being done to gather the needed materials and plan its, talking about the arcs, construction with a specific purpose in mind, Armageddon. Symbolically, the ark being designed for Armageddon is inside the hearts of Yahushua's sons. In other words, true spiritual Israel are the Ark's architecture that is being designed. So we talked about the Holy of Holies being in the tabernacle, um, and we talked about all of that being symbolic for our hearts. We talked about that in past videos. Uh, 1 Corinthians 1.7. Um, so you can click on that and make it bigger, but also I just copied and pasted it here as well so you can see it better. So, uh, 1 Corinthians 1, seven, So that ye come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We also have 1 Corinthians 7.17, so here you have the 7.17. This is also 7.17 because 1 Corinthians is the seventh book. But as God hath distributed to every man, as the Lord hath called every one, so let him walk. And so ordain I in all churches. So I put these Bible verses to confirm the understanding of the words that I've defined. And here we can clearly see that this is talking about using your gifts, being called, everybody being called. In other words, the church. You are regularly doing this architecture design work yourself personally with your own hands. You overestimate a revolt, seditious act or rebellion against you. So again, uh, confirming Bible verses, 1 Corinthians 10.33, Even as I please all men in all things, not seeking mine own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. Matthew 10.32 or 33. Sometimes when I put more than one Bible verse, the, because the, the holy letter I'm looking to confirm is 10.33, uh, because that comes from here, overestimation, 10.33. But um, sometimes I put the other Bible verses just for context, right, of what the, the verse is talking about. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him I will confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Uh, just quickly, when I talk about the sons, it's uh, for males and females. We're talking, this is a spiritual uh, description of being a mature uh, disciple of Holy Yahushua. Okay, so this Bible verse right here is talking about the revolt or seditious act. We're talking about people uh, who confess the Father and those who do not confess the Father. Those who um, seek the prof for the profit of many, 
or for themselves, right? This is what it's talking about for the revolt or rebellion. So what I want you to understand is that in this TV show, this ambulance that you see here got in a car accident or got in an accident, okay? What I'm understanding is that we're being warned that after our training, now all of this is from the TV show, I'll, I'll put it this way. Uh, you can see on your screen here the, uh, the scene right before the car crash. And you see that he just, his baby was just born, okay? Now this baby that's born is representing uh, us having just been graduated from our spiritual school or it could represent whatever first fruits that you are pr producing your baby um, whatever however you want to look at it it's representing the birth of the next phase the new phase right and for us our next birth is finishing our training that we're doing here in the next year three years and it's also representing the, the our first fruits that we are producing okay so he's just holding the baby in his arm just the baby is just born when the accident happens and so what I am understanding because I'm saying this to you because I also had a dream about that a few days back I didn't record it um, remember after I told you I had a the best driving dream of my life with me and my aunt we were driving side by side in the car and then I jumped like the bionic bionic woman and I was on the ark remember I told you guys that dream well it was like after I filmed that video I had a horrible driving dream where uh, the driving dream pretty much resembled uh, the, the scene in this movie when the ambulance got into the car accident and in the dream I was leaving school so that's why I'm saying that I understand that probably when we finish school which will be in three years so we're talking 2022 about this around the summer June of 2022 apparently there is going to be some kind of as the letter line says here some kind of revolt re revolt re rebellion sedition and when we're talking about revol revolts uh, sedition and rebellion we're talking about as this Bible verse says right here those who uh, deny uh, the father right and so but when this happens, don't panic because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be overestimating the rebellion, okay? So probably what I'm understanding is that we're going to be test tested, right? It's going to be a testing and all we have to do is just stay cool. Just don't flip out. Just, you know, um, as it says here, just continue doing your work that you've been doing with your hands, with your own hands, as it says right here. Uh, you are regularly doing this work yourself personally with your own hands. Just continue doing the work. As I have been told, I'm the designer. I am to design. I am to write everything into destruction every day. So, yes, this is just confirming that we're going to be going into, to, into destruction right but as we're going through uh, destruction we are to continue bearing the good fruit we are to continue doing the work that we have been doing with our hands that is what we need to be doing and not focusing on the rebellious act because we're going to overestimate it okay that's the uh, what I understand right now from this message in this video in the next couple of videos, I'm going to try to put together all the loose ends about Ryan Eggold, who was the actor in this TV show. His name represents Egg Old, but it also represents Egg Gold, Golden Egg, the goose who laid the golden egg. Yes, this is something very important that we need to look at. Also, the reason why the gold is coming up is because of this new gold coin. It's the Davidic Dav Davids, right? The King David's gold coin. And I'm going to talk about this later in the video a little bit and more particularly in next week's video. And when we, when we use our spiritual eyes, we can see that this is seven 
one seven okay that's what this post is about seven one seven so what i want you to understand is that this code this coin is representing two things it's representing 1414 the the meaning of 1414 everything we've discussed in the past videos about what 1414 represents meaning uh holy yahushua second coming first fruits the 144,000, his bridal army but but what I want you to understand even more than that that this coin has a twofold meaning it represents the 1414 as in the 14 karat gold and all of that I'll explain later but it also represents the 1717 which is the 717 and this represents the name David hence we got the message from Mary Magdalene it was given to brother David and now we're understanding why it's many reasons I'm sure but one of the biggest um, reasons that I can see right now is that it's because his name is David so we've done a lot of work on David if you just go back here Saints and you type in David you're going to see uh, some of the work we've done here so here we talked about uh, turning the 69 and the 1619 codes so you have the information here um, if you remember we broke down the word David in English and and Greek and now we're dealing with the name David in Hebrew which is different but it has the same kind of meaning so uh, as I'm going to explain later in the video what we're understanding is that the Davidic dynasty is going to return Saints this is so hard to explain I don't even <laughs> Holy Father and Yahushua Hamashiach's holy name, please guide your servant to be able to share with your, your children, with my brothers and sisters, what you would have me speak for. In Yahushua Hamashiach's holy name I pray, amen. And thank you, Father, for, for, thank you, Holy Father, for protecting our communications and giving us a spiritual canopy of protection um, over everyone who is hearing this word. In Yahushua Hamashiach's holy name. All right, saints, I'm going to show you some flashback videos. One of the first ones is a flashback of when we decoded the name David in, um, in English and in Greek. I want you to remember what we understood about the name David. Last week I was talking about making a picture. This is a door, this is a door. This is reality, the world we live in. You have the Father and you have you have good, you have holy and you have evil. The 13 is representing the multiples of the name of Satan. So you have good and bad, the holy and evil in this reality. We were born, we, tra we are transformed, we transform and we leave through the door. You have the same thing here. This is David, David Starr, his name, it's hidden in there. The Antichrist you have right here representing the 13. And then God's Holy Spirit you have here representing as Abby in the reality. So mathematically it works. It works mathematically as well. Can you see this, saints? Can you see this? Tell, tell me I'm making it up. You know that you know I'm not making this up. It's right here. It's mathematical proof. At least it's proof to the fact that this is intelligent design and not by chance. So you can you can see the date here 692018. So that's the magical 69 key date that I was talking about in the last video. Um, and I was explaining to her here how my video accidentally got released on 69 when I had programmed it. I thought I had programmed it to go out on the Friday the night before. Like I always release a video every Friday. For some reason the uh, Bible verse Second Chronicles 6:6 6, 6 popped up. So of course six plus six is 12 and we talked about in the past video how 12 means the chosen right so when we look at the verse six and we also know that six is the flesh the body flesh and it's also transformation in the material world that's what we've been talking about the past two videos but I have chosen Jerusalem this is second uh, Chronicles 6 6 that my name might be there and have chosen David to be over my people Israel so that is the verse and then of course David is what we've been talking about so literally the name David is literally over his people do 
you see what I mean? So on that on that screenshot I showed you from Sister Ashley last week, and I said that the 21 is here on her screenshot. Literally, that is David, the name of David, over that the triangle. The 21 was on the complete triangle, and 23 was on the incomplete triangle. So that would make sense. When we're incomplete, we're receiving wakefulness, which is getting this information we're doing now. And when we are complete, it's the name of David, because we are now chosen as Jerusalem, as the body of Christ on earth, the church, the new church, um, the end times church, the five groups of the bridal army, that my name might be there and have chosen David to be over my people. David, boom, right here, boom, over the triangle, boom, number six, boom, physical transformation, boom. All of that is in that Bible verse. And then I said, um, 21, now this was before the video came out. 21, uh, Gematria of the name of David, we talked about that, plus the 12 tribes, and that equals Revelation 21, 12, because in the last video we said you take 21, because that's his name, Gematria, and then you add it up 12 times. So that gives you 21 and 12, and the verses, and had Revelation and had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, uh, and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. So once again, you have David being the ch representing the chosen, and the people, the children of Israel. 2112, once more, it's right here. These are confirming each other. 2112, 6, Chronicles 6, 6 equals 12 chosen the chosen David so then I was saying David uh, 21 plus 1 for Yah and you get 22 22 is the Hebrew alphabet and we've done so many videos we broke down pi I mean just broke it down just if 22 is the Hebrew alphabet and 22 also represents the chosen the people of Israel that are under David that have the key that have this right then 22 is the cipher 22 is the key so let's look at this as what well. this is from the facebook group brother anthony here he put that he looked up the biblical meaning of 22 and the meaning seems to make a lot of sense especially that the number means that it's a key from god i dreamt of picking up a key in front of an open door all glory to god so the number 22 has long been known to represent a cipher or key from god 22 mm, mm. The number of the alphabet mm, mm, in Hebrew mm, mm, has long been known to represent a cipher or key from God, a term used by ancient Egyptian priests for documents associated with number 22 was a writing from God himself, the secret in the Bible. This is wakefulness theology, a writing from God himself, the secret not only in the Bible, in existence, in Pi, 22. All right, so cipher is another word for wait for it, wait for it. The seal. I'm going to show you a video about this coin right here, this Davidic coin from Elijah and Moses. And she's explaining the meaning of, of this coin. In my last video, I talked about the newly minted Sanhedrin King David coin that has the three sets of 14 King David's name and Gematria is 14 14 grams of 14 karat gold and Jesus genealogy mentioning from the time of Adam three sets of 14 generations until the coming of the Messiah Jesus Christ of Nazareth I made that connection and it was really a divine revelation of the Lord connecting those two things of the house of David. This is the newly minted King David coin, restoring the Davidic dynasty. And you can see that the reverse says the temple coin, and it actually shows the first temple, the second temple, and the third temple. And this is the coin that ushers in the monarchy, the restoration of the Davidic dynasty that eventually leads to the return 
of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. There is an organization in Israel that's been going on for years now, trying to reestablish the Davidic dynasty, and the organization called Vad Hamashiach that supports the rights of all male descendants of King David. But what I wanted to share with you are a few of these things that this gentleman, Baruch Fishman, is the founder and co-director of People for a Bill to build the Bet HaMikdash. That's the third temple. We will then go to TABU, the land registration office, and request to register the 500 by 500 Amat area that corresponds to the original Temple Mount in the name of the all-male descendants of King David. We will register the rest of the Temple Mount in the name of Israel Auerbach. Israel was a Golani who was picked to go on missions for General Sharon and subsequently selected as an advisor to an important Israeli security organization. His father was head of the Mossad for all of Europe after World War II and purchased secrets that are essential to Israel's national security. Israel descends generation after generation via Rebbe Nachman of Breslov, the Baal Shem Tov, and the Maharal of Prague from King David and was anointed king of Israel by the Admor Elimelech of Ramot, a descendant of the Baal Shem Tov. We will be using a Hebrew translation of the foremost archaeological study on the location of the original Temple Mount to identify the area we wish to register as well as using archaeological proof of the existence of the House of David and the existence of specific kings in the all-male line. So, you have right there in that statement that they have anointed as King of Israel by the Admor Elimelech of Remote, they have anointed Israel Auerbach as their king of the lineage of King David. It's already been done. It's already set in place. And now I believe that they are trying, as they state on their own websites, to finally get rid of the democracy in Israel and set up the monarchy and that is what the printing of the King David coin is restoring the Davidic dynasty the monarchy and showing on the back of the coin the Holy Temple showing three tiers of the Holy Temple the first second and third at the top the Lord says at that time I will rescue my flock, they shall no longer be a prey, and I will judge between sheep and sheep, and I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them, and he shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I the Lord will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I am the Lord, I have spoken. Ezekiel 34, 22-24 So, David is the prince. Messiah is the prince and king from his lineage. So the Davidic dynasty is about to return. Well, you don't have to bring the Messiah. He's coming himself. He's descending from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet call of God. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yeshua HaMashiach of Nazareth, is already the anointed Messiah. So right there it states that all they have to do is choose a Mashiach and anoint him. And they'll have their king and they're working to set up the kingship and the monarchy. And I believe that that's what they're trying to do with the Israeli elections. Not being able to form a government coalition and hoping that the monarchy is established. And here from my book, The Almond Tree, Aaron's Rod, The Messiah King of Israel, is the true anointed Davidic King of Israel, Yeshua HaNatsri Vimelech HaYehudim, Yeshua, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, 
from his burial shroud it's written that he is the king of kings and lord of lords all right saints so the message that i've understood so far is that this coin like like in the movie the arrival where i said it has two meanings this picture you see right here it has two meanings it is talking about us getting the weapon from uh holy yahushua and it is also warning of the coming antichrist this coin is the same way on one side in one way it's warning of the coming uh deception the antichrist and his kingdom and on the other side or in the other way it is announcing or prophesying or showing that the true spiritual israel is about to be seen okay how do i know that let's uh, go through what you, we have on the screen here let's start with noon remember we did noon a couple of videos ago and this is the uh, image that brother david got from mary magdalene now his name is david brother david he received this message now here noon represents mashiach ben david or david noon is the 14th letter of the alphabet 14 and this is noon backwards if you remember which equals david now this is of course hebrew um, and before we did it in english and greek the forefather of the kingdom of israel the heir to David is Mashiach ben David, of whom is said, as long as the duration of the sun, his name shall rule. His name, his name, his name. This is his name right here. And in Hebrew, it's written like this, just like you see on the coin. I would like you to understand or see that this also says 717. And 717 is also 1717. I'm showing you here really quickly a video to remind you that that's what we've seen before. 717 is 1717. May his name be eternal while the sun lasts. May his name endure let men invoke his blessedness upon themselves let all nations count him happy the sages interpret the the verb yinan in this verse to refer to the messiah refer to the messiah and may be literally read as may his name new no. no. propagate can you believe that so this is saying that that is his name it's saying that that is the name of david right here what I'm trying to express here is that I was saying that this represents true spiritual Israel, this represents us, but now we are understanding even more specifically that we, our name as true spiritual Israel, are under his name, David, which is Noon. Do you understand what I'm saying here? That's why here you have it like his name written in Hebrew, as as uh, with the crown with the crown is under his his name is over Israel true spiritual Israel as I explained in the in the video that you just saw a few minutes ago this is true spiritual Israel under the name David okay here when we go to please bear with me this is not easy to put to the pieces together when you spell David in Hebrew it is Daled Vav Daled so this is Daled Vav Daled. So when you look it up in the pictographs, ancient Hebrew, Daled Vav Daled, right? And when you add that up, it equals 14. This Daled, it means door, move, entrance, nail, secure, add, and. So it literally means, like I showed you in the last picture, it literally means that we are moving through the door, through the entrance, and we are securing it. Just like we saw in the video I showed you a few minutes ago. Here you have the door, here you have the door, door. Delta, delta is the change. So all of this is representing transformation. 
All of this is representing transformation. David belongs the singular, singular honor of being the first and the last human mentioned in the entire New Testament. He is the beginning of the New Testament and he is at the end of the New Testament. And everything that's in the middle of the New Testament is the transition from before to after. This David represents transformation. David is the transformation from evil to holy, like 666 to 153, the five steps of the five groups of 153 or the harvest workers. Do you remember we learned this, right? So what I'm saying is that what I'm showing you here is confirmation to what we studied or understood here. All right? Bear with me for a minute. So we learned that the, the key of David is represented by the 6-9, the 1619, the 6191, remember? And it's because you turn it around, you turn it upside down and around, remember? Remember, this is why the key of David is represented with this six nine type of thing. It represents turning the key and opening. So six nine, turning the key of David means to open. Revelation six nine means opening the seal. Do you remember? In order to do that, you you have to transform from loving your bodily flesh and fear of suffering. You have to renounce it and confess the true living. Um, Yah and Son. You have to leave your animal nature. Embrace transform into your true spiritual human nature 16 and 19 so we're talking about wisdom escaping wrath so remember it is the key the key of david this is the resulting this is the result of turning the key it means having the wisdom to escape and to be able to judge which is activating the key it is the key to be able to see overcome death and gain wisdom salvation and fruit from the tree of immortality and then you have all these Bible verses I put here with the 16, the 19, the 6, and the 9. And I put the main uh, point of the Bible verse, which is key overcomes death, see wisdom, salvation, and tree of immortality. And I put these together and I had the sentence, okay? So this uh, 6, 9 turning the key, it represents the change or the transformation from evil to holy, from flesh, death, to eternal life. And uh, this is the Bible verse I talked about in the video uh, so biblical direct connection between David, this is the door, the two doors, yes, and Israel with six, two chronicles, six, 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 twelve, meaning the chosen. But I have chosen Jerusalem that my name might be there and have chosen David to rule over my people Israel, that my name might be there and have chosen David to rule over my people. Remember? May his name noon propagate. As long as the duration of the sun, his name shall rule. And have chosen David to be over my people, that my name might be there. So here, in this picture, we can see the turning of the key. Because you have, when you turn a key, if it starts upside down, when you turn the key, it goes right side up, right? So Peter was crucified upside down. Holy Ashokushua was crucified right side up. So this is representing the corruption being transformed and restored to redemption. And that's what we saw in the movie A Wrinkle in Time, the Tesseract, the transformation, and going through the door. This is a door right here. This is a door right here. Right in the middle is transformation right here. You go from evil to holy and you are redeemed and transformed and you go through the portal. That's what we understood before. All of this is exactly what's being confirmed right now. Remember this Bible verse, saints, and I will place on his shoulder the key of the house of David. Remember that's Isaiah 2, 2, 2, 2, 22, 22, Isaiah 22, 22. Do you remember last week we looked it up on uh, Strong's and it meant the water of life? Yes, do you remember that? Well, guess what? It means the water of life, but it also is representing the verse for the key of the house of David. Saints, do you remember this Bible verse we talked about not long ago? Isaiah 43, 1 through 7. Here, we, here again we have this 17. Everyone that is called by my name, I have created for him my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. By my name, I have chosen Jerusalem that my name might be there and have chosen David 
to be over my people. So remember, saints, we talked about his name is in our DNA. Do you remember that? The Most High Father's name is in our DNA and David and the name of David is over Israel. Brother David had another dream and in his dream he was playing soccer with soap and he kicked the soap into the the goal. And what I interpreted from that, uh, Brother David and Sister Polly and I, we talked about it a little bit, but the main point that I took away from it was that the goal is transformation. When you, when you wash yourself with soap, and then soap also has different meanings, but I don't want to, it's already complicated enough, I just want to keep it simple. When you wash yourself with soap, what do you do? You clean yourself, right? You clean yourself. The symbolism of cleaning yourself is representing transformation. Just like in the message that Holy Yahushua gave me, saying that in order to be at the, at, in order to receive what's coming next, you have to be at the 432 and you have to be uncorrupted and your emotions have to be uh, straight, right? Clean. This is representing the soap. This is representing transformation. So all of this to say that the message is the goal is transformation. Once we are transformed, you have the key of David, you have the water of life, you're on the ark, you're healed and you're ready to heal others and, and do the work that you were put here to do. This right here, I can't explain in this video, but the last time the Davidic dynasty was here was when the Machizeldek priesthood was at its height. And I'm going to talk about that when we talk about the Machizeldek prophecy. And what I want to show you, from what I understand, is that this is going to happen again that this is what the coin is telling us that true spiritual Israel the true descendants of David being biological and spiritual are going to rise up and the time they're going to rise up is right now in this 1414 let's look so this is what I have for the moment I'm writing the meanings to these codes 1414 meaning Yahushua's second coming, his first fruits, the 144,000, his bridal army, and true spiritual Israel. This is the 1414. 1717, ark, the Ark of the Covenant, Noah's Ark, the crucifixion, wood symbolizing, this is acacia wood, I should put, symbolizing sacrifice and redemption. The DNA transformation, we got that from 1717, the QQ message. And that, of course, that DNA transformation, it can be uh, holy or evil, right? The manifestation of his hidden ones. Now, we got this from uh, Sister Catherine on Wakefulness Theology Group. She shared that with us. And now we have David as well. And David is who, which is his hidden ones, those who have been transformed, his hidden ones are under the name David. That is the true Davidic kingdom or the true Davidic dynasty that's going to return is true spiritual Israel. It's still us. It's not all these people that um, Sister Elijah Moses was talking about in her video. She knows that already. It's not those people. And the time that it's going to happen is now. This is the time it's going to happen, the time that we appear. This is the time, and I'm saying it's the time because this is when we're in the middle. We got our crown, meaning we have the key of David. We have the water of life. We're on the ark. We, we're his first fruits. We're like, we're here. We're winning, right? And we're doing that job. This is the time. This, the, this is the time of the 14. And this is who, this is who is going to be appearing at the time of the 14. And all of that, we can see that on this coin. But at the same time, this coin is, has two faces. One side is, the tr is true spiritual Israel, which is us. And the other side is the Antichrist and his false kingdom that is going to be appearing and claiming this, um, lying 
and and blaspheming and cheating and building a third temple and doing all of their evil stuff. That's what this coin is showing. So saints, I pray that that was clear. This is really, this has been one of the most difficult videos I've ever, I don't know if I've ever done, but it's been really difficult. I've been lamenting on how to explain this because there's so many pieces to pull together. I pray that it was clear. I hope that you understand what um, Ruach HaKadosh has put on my heart to, to, to share with you. Now, where we're going to go from this is I'm going to build on it because in the Bible, in, in Enoch, it's talking about Machizodek and it's explaining that, that, that Machizodek is an archetype that is going to return and is going to return um, during the, the reign of David, just like it happened the last time during his kingdom. So this right here is just a confirmation to explain that, yes, to, to confirm that this is about to happen. It's about to go down, saints, and you are directly implicated. King David, he was not only a king, but he was also a priest. Do the duties of a priest and king at the same time. So we're going to be talking about that in, in um, later videos, but I pray that this was clear. Holy is Yahushua. One important point I want to show you before I, I re, before we return to the video I recorded on Saturday is I prayed and I asked uh, the Most High Father, do I have permission to share this information? Do I have permission to publish this information? I always pray over it before I, I publish anything. And the confirmation I got or the response I got was attention, right? So I looked up attention in my dictionary that I'm writing. It's the spiritual meaning of these words, which are different from the layman human definitions of these words are different than the spiritual meanings. This is, this is what attention means that I have so far written down. In mercy and love and spirit wished to produce fruit independently that the spirit might not enjoy goodness alone, but that other spirits of the unshakable generation might produce bodies and fruit, glory and honor and imperishability and the infinite grace of the Holy Spirit. So that's what I want to stress to you. The reason I'm doing this work is because I know that this message, message isn't just for me, even though, yes, it's going to happen to me too. But the message isn't just for me. The message I'm supposed to be sharing this with you so that all of us who are a part of the unshakable generation can produce uh, bodies and fruit for the glory and honor of the Most High Father. So just um, saints, remember that as you're going through your work, the, the message of this video today is that we need to work together. And here is just confirmation again, confirmation that this is the message for this week. We have to work together, saints. Without never. further ado, back to your regularly scheduled program. Ah. So today's episode is, if I'm not mistaken, it's episode number 42. And the title is, How to Stay. Now we've changed, right? Before it was how to get on the ark, now we've changed it to how to stay on the ark, work together. Now this is very important. I don't want to call out anybody or try to make any vilify any of my brothers or sisters or anything like that. So I'm going to try to speak very carefully if you can read between the lines. We are a small group of people online and in media because there's also, you know, podcasts, there's other uh, ministries that do this kind of work in different ways, but it, it primarily goes through or uses the internet to stream or get out their content right so there are a few of us who are doing this kind of work um, in the end days you know it's I don't know what to call it but I would say let's let's call us first fruit ministries um, and are still popping up every day you know we get a new messenger a new prophet a new uh, whoever watchman we are not working together so I, again, I'm not trying to point anybody out. I'm not trying to put anybody on blast. I'm just talking about in a general sense. So for example, that's why it's very frustrating for me to watch certain YouTube channels 
because they have a piece of the puzzle and then I'll watch another channel, they have a piece of the puzzle, I'll watch another channel, they have a piece. And on my own, through the Holy Spirit, I can put together the three people's different messages, add them with my own, and understand the big picture. But I'm doing that work on my own. Not, these three people did not in any way reach out to the other two people or four people to, to do that work. Do you see what I mean? That has to stop. And it is super frustrating to me. And if it's frustrating to me, imagine what it's like for the Holy Spirit. We cannot continue working this way. For the moment, I think it's we're just getting by. It's all right. Everybody is arriving. We're, we have arrived. More people are going to be coming as we go through destruction. And we're going to slowly be coming together. And, you know, around the 20, 2025 point. I'm sure we'll be working together and it'll be a smooth machine and everything will be rolling and it'll be going and everything will be fine. But I'm just pointing this out because we're not there yet. We have to come together on this. You only are going to be given a piece of the information. And in order to have the whole story, you have to work with your brothers and sisters. This was made that way on purpose and I'm quite sure it's a test. Who is willing to, to be a servant, who is willing to be humble, who is willing to, to love their brothers and sisters as themselves, who is willing to put themselves out on a limb and trust people, people that they have to, they have to discern through their spiritual, uh, they have to discern through the Holy Spirit who is who and trust people and love them, who is able and willing to do that work. And I'm telling you, that is a very dangerous test because there's a lot of prophets and, and ministers and messengers and watchmen and et cetera, yada, yada, who got everything else going on, but they're isolated on their little island. And they're not reaching out to their brothers and sisters and they're not sharing information and they're not um, uh, respecting the uh, community and, and communing with others. That is a part of the covenant. We've talked about that. We've talked about that. We've talked about that. If you haven't seen it, please go back. So this could be a huge stumbling block for, for many people and we need to cut it out. Stop doing that. I'm going to show you what I just told you here in this TV show. This is the arrival. So this is a scene, I think it's somewhere near the beginning of the movie. And he says, you know, this is her partner, uh, Louise, who is the woman. I'm going to need my team to get together with Louise's team. What they're saying right here is that, so here she has, this was the, this was after the explosion, right? And remember in last week I showed you the alien was putting all these um, symbols on the, on the on the glass wall and I was saying this is all of the manna that's uh, falling now and going to be falling so she has a picture of it and she's saying this is uh, this is everything this is one of 12 we are part of a larger whole so Saints um, this is this is huge one of 12 you got 12 tribes you got 12 disciples 12 one of 12 you do know that the disciples represent the 12 tribes, right? So whatever you got going on, you, your connection, your relationship with the Most High Father, you are only one of 12. Um, there's 11 other people, but when we're talking about people, we're talking about groups of people, okay? Not just one person. So you're one of 12 groups. There are um, 11 other groups of people out there who have the same kind of relationship information that you're getting and you need to find these people and you need to put your information together with these people in order to have the full puzzle. We need to talk to the other sites. Now, um, Saints, I know there's a lot of, there's some prophets out there that have information that's just incredible. I mean, just like, what? I mean, wow. And I don't want to say any names. These people who have uh, really, really big messages to give, it's like, they give their message and then but they are still kind of isolated which i understand because i do this work i understand it's difficult it's difficult to to be faithful and committed to the work you're doing and then to also have the energy to invest in someone else and their message it's really it's a really it's a challenge it's a big challenge but the fact of the matter is we have to do it we have to do it because none of us by ourselves have the full picture and the reason I know this besides this movie is showing you and 
besides it says it in the Bible. I know this logically because none of us can hold the, 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 the we, we, none of us can hold the full majesty of the Most High Father. It's impossible. Our little brains, our little spirits, our little minds, our little bodies, we can't. We would explode. Literally, we would explode. We can't. That's why he has it scattered among us like this so we can put it together because you cannot retain all this manna, all this energy, all this power, all this majesty, all this love, grace, beauty, mercy. Father, you can't. So please, if you really want to do a service to the body of Christ, not only give your piece of the puzzle, but reach across the aisle to your brother and your sister and help us to put these pieces together. That's what I've been doing. That's what I will continue to do. But it is a big job and you cannot do it by yourself. Okay, if, if, the, if true spiritual Israel is going to be coming together in 2025, you guys, we have to start doing this now. Okay, now. We need to talk to other sites. We need to help them with what they got from the other heptopods. Exactly, exactly. And that's, and I told you, I've already said this. I'm just gonna repeat myself because that's what I did. Um, that's exactly it. It's like, I watch other people's videos who I know is filled with the Holy Spirit. And I know that this is coming from the Father, but I could spend my whole life, my whole day just um, translating and interpreting what they're doing and if they ha and if they reach across to me then then they can have the piece of the puzzle I have I can have the piece of the puzzle they have which will cause us to have more understanding which will cause the whole picture to, to come together clearer do you see what I mean it's not a one-man show stop acting like it is Saints I love you I love you. I know that I we need to work together. I know that I need you just as much as you need me. We have to work together. Children, play nicely. But it says that all the pieces fit together. There you go. Boom. It's in the movie. It's in the Bible. Um, it's part of the covenant that we are to love our brothers and sisters as we love ourselves. Okay guys, okay saints, so this is awesome. This is the last clip from the movie Arrival. And in this clip, you're going to see symbolically the escape. Symbolically, this represents the escape, okay? How do I know that? Well, she gets in this, this pod here and she goes into the sky. So that's what you would call the escape. When she gets there, um, you'll see, we'll talk about it after. I want you to notice how it seems like she's in water.
They show uh, something that kind of resembles like an escape. Um, she's given the the weapon or she's told that she already has the weapon. And we saw last week the moment she got the weapon when she was writing the letters. And now uh, the alien is telling her to use the weapon. It's the holy letters. You see right here, you have all these different words inside of this symbol and we they know that because of the the numbers they're measuring and putting number values to each of these points and it relates to a word and you put them together and you have sentences or the full idea so saints that's what this is and that's what we're going to be receiving now in the next playlist for example, the, the letter lines are like a written interpretation of a part of what the number is saying and a part of what the symbol represents. But the full interpretation and understanding comes from the Holy Spirit. And it is only through the Holy Spirit that you're able to, to get the meaning of it because it's locked. So it's just like, to remind you, it's just like this message I got from Holy Yahushua <clears throat> on May 16th, right? So not very long ago. Um, and remember 16 and 19. Remember the 1619 code or the 69 code? We were saying <clears throat> that that is turning the key. Do you remember we learned that in the last playlist? The 69 is turning the key, right? In, inside a voice, inside a voice that I'm speaking, my voice, inside a voice, the information is locked unless the hearer is at 432. Do you remember last week we shown the 432, the bomb, right? This was where we are at in the in the sequence of events that are going to lead up to the explosion, which from the explosion leads up to the escape. Remember, we are at 432 right now. Do you remember this from last week, Saint? Can only this power, this greatness, can only come from the Most High Father, and to try to assign it to any anything else is sacrilegious. <laughs> the 432, we, we talked before and we said it actually represents the fruits of the Spirit, and when we um, read the letter line for 432, that's what they were talking about. They were showing Holy Yahushua's fruits, that's how the disciples knew he, who he was. It was saying how you share your fruits of the Spirit with others, and that is do you remember here? I'll put it back on the screen in case you forgot. So all of that to say that the door, I love this picture because um, Sister Anne shared it on the Facebook uh, once and I love the picture and I just couldn't wait to have, you know, to be able to use it. So here we are, we're able to use it. Um, this door, this door, let's say that this door is symbolic of the information being locked, okay? This, this information is locked here this is pi it's locked and the only way you can get in you can get through to understanding what it is is that your emotions are proper and you are uncorrupted so you need to come completely out of this world system this satanic system in order to be uncorrupted you need to be completely sold out uh, to the most high father um, you need to give him complete control over your life. You need to repent of your sins and you need to be completely focused on him and how to have his will done in your life and completely give up control. Heal yourself and then begin to heal others and work together. All right, this is a synopsis of everything that we've said uh, over all these videos. Once you do all of these steps that we've talked about in this playlist, um, in the past few playlists, then this information you will be able to understand, unlock, understand, um, retain, open. I hope you understand a little bit better um, his holy language, how it works, why it works. We're given this tool right now at this time because deception, as you know, as it says in the Bible, deception is going to be so high that it would... Um, it would deceive even the elect if it could, but it can't. And he's giving us this information, this tool, this weapon right now at this time so that we will not be deceived, okay? 
you can't once you when you have this it's very very difficult to to be deceived because you can see the truth you can see the truth everywhere you go every everywhere you turn you're going to be able to see right through the smoke and mirrors if you are if your emotions are proper and if you are uncorrupted hallelujah let's move on okay so i just want to share with you for the end of the video confirmations that i received about um New Amsterdam. So one of the first confirmations is that this TV show is based on a book called 12, pa 12 Patients, Life and Death at Bellevue Hospital. Inspiration for the TV show, okay. Uh, New Amsterdam, right here. So I just want to show you that it says 12 patients. It says 12 patients. It says so here is, is proof that I'm not making it up. When we have the 12, the 12 patients, we know that that is the 12 tribes of Israel. It's talking about us being on the ark, coming in and out of the ark during the harvest destruction and healing our brothers and sisters who are in darkness and to bring them to Holy Yahushua so that they will be saved. That's what the show is showing you. I'm not making it up. This is what we're going to be doing during the harvest. That's what we're being trained for right now. We will be the priests, which are, who are the doctors. Um, so I finished watching the season and I must say, I mean, in the middle, like the episode one through eight is very, um, very clear. I saw a lot of messages in there from one through eight. And then it got diluted with their personal stories, a lot of uh, agenda and, you know, some satanic agendas and, you know, the usual yada yada. But then at the end, the last, I don't know, one or two episodes came back to the, the messages, right? And you can see very clearly um, Ryan Eggold, who is like representing uh, as far as an archetype, like a, a Yahushua type of character. And you can see him again, he has these cards, these uh, insurance cards, and he wants to give them out to everybody in New York so that they know that they can come to the hospital for free. This is just like the Bible verse where um, the master sent out his servants to invite everyone to dinner. That is exactly, that is symbolically, as far as a parable, that is the same thing. He has these medical cards, these insurance cards, and he's given it out to everybody. And so this is one of the last scenes. And you blink, it's gone just like that. And I thought that was uh, funny because you know, you blink in the blink of an eye. Yeah. And you see this other ambulance coming. So saints, I, I still don't have time to deal with this this week. Uh, I'm sorry, Sister Brittany and Sister Polly. We've received some major um, confirmations about uh, the Prince of Persia arriving, uh, war is coming and the, the army of Satan is appearing. We've received major confirmation about those things and I don't have time in this video to go over and I'll try to do it for next time. Here are uh, two videos from Sister Brittany who she has the confirmations in there and also the confirmations from Sister Polly are on Facebook, but I'll make sure to come back uh, next week and point out these confirmations to you guys. Also next week, we're gonna start dealing with Shazam and the tuning fork and uh, after that we're going to get into Machezeldeck all right the prophecy of Machezeldeck so I pray that you guys are well I pray that this was helpful love you so very much in Christ peace love and blessings to you and your families holy is Yahushua all glory to the most high father shalom